word of advice. Beware monsters and spoilers that lie ahead. My govanen. Kedmel. Which means long time no see in Elvish and uh, Witcher Elvish. Season 3 of Witcher on Netflix is out, so it's time for a review. As I haven't reviewed the first two seasons, here is what I think about them. Season 1 is full of chaotic storytelling, low production value and poor execution. Yen is annoying and boring, there is too much Siri with not enough Geralt. Many stories are changed, but there is no substantial gain because of those changes. The final meeting of our heroes has no weight because they haven't met each other before. Episode 1 of season 2 gave a little hope, it was a story from the books brought to the screen quite faithfully. And it all went downhill from there. Deviating from the books on a massive scale, the story introduced substantial changes to the characters and to the world. It all culminated in Yennefer trying to kill Ciri to regain her power. It is worth mentioning that neither her murderous attempt nor her loss of power were present in the books. Now on to the season 3. We see our heroes Geralt, Ciri and Yennefer running from many people that tried to capture Ciri. They hide in many places, and they travel around the world and finally they stay at Yapens. During that time Geralt and Yen are not talking to each other. Geralt just doesn't trust Yen after she tried to kill Ciri and Yennefer sends him letters. How very mature of them. But uh, all of that is resolved after 10 minutes. Yennefer apologizes to Ciri and it's all that we see. There's a great story to be told here. A story about repentance, forgiveness, uh, reconciliation. But no, it just happens. So if we ignore that, then we would get 10 minutes of family bonding. We desperately needed that. It was so visible that it was absent in season 1. And finally we get some time that our heroes spend together. Uh, Sirius learning magic with Yennefer, she spends time with Geralt. And uh, after this reconciliation, they all seem pretty happy. And yeah, it lasts 10 minutes. But if we ignore that uh, storyline with Yennefer, then it would be quite good. Then we see the people that are looking for Siri. Rins hires a monster that will be able to track her. Uh, elves are looking for her as well. And uh, Vizimir, king of Redania, scolds Digstrap for his failures and he sends his brother, originally in the books he was his son, Radovid, uh, to find the princess. Digstrap sends Yaskir to help Radovid. If you didn't know, Yaskir was a Redanian spy. Then our heroes decide that the best thing to do while hiding from enemies is to attend a local festival and wear no disguise. Yeah, technically they wear a mask or two, but as you can see, they barely cover anything. And that's the only scene in which Ciri wears hairs. And of course, it is during the festival when Ciri is attacked by the monster hired by Rins. Fortunately, Geralt is there and he slays the beast. Then, having no basis for that claim, he concludes that it was Rins that sent the monster and now our heroes decide to set a trap for the mage. Ciri will serve as bait. She will travel with Yarpen and his companions, while Geralt and Yen will hide somewhere close and surprise the enemies that attack the convoy. But there's one more person essential to the plan, as Geralt concludes that Ciri will need escort. And who better to serve that role if not the mightiest warrior that Geralt knows? Yaskir. So, 5 seconds, literally 5 seconds after Yaskir is recruited by Philippa to help Radovid, he is recruited by Yapen to help Ciri. And yeah, he joins the convoy and we see that Geralt and Yen are not hiding in any way. So if anybody would send any scouts, those scouts would see Geralt and Yen. So is this really a trap anymore? Anyway, our heroes make camp in old elven ruins of Sherawit. There Geralt tells Ciri about the advantages of neutrality and she gives him a generic speech about wanting everybody to live in peace and leading elves and humans to cooperate. Then suddenly Rins and his henchmen appear and try to grab Ciri but Geralt and Yennefer force them to retreat. Rins tries to escape via a portal but Geralt follows him thanks to Yennefer and then elves appear and attack everybody else. Geralt realizes that, breaks Rins' hands instead of killing him or capturing him, returns, the portal closes and then our heroes fend off the elves, Ciri breaks bones with her bare hands and the battle is won. After the fight, Yennefer says that Rince's portal must have been created by somebody more powerful, so she concludes that a mighty mage is helping Rince. She also convinces Geralt to send Ciri to the school for magic users in Aretuza. 
Geralt on his part will be searching for rings, so yeah, I guess he really wishes he killed him, but unfortunately the show does not acknowledge the fact that he had an opportunity, and yeah, we must live with that. Meanwhile, one of the elves in Francesca's camp is disappointed with the fight and Francesca's search for Ciri, and he leaves the camp, he intends to find his old friend, and we'll see him later. Then Rins is healed by his mysterious master, and we are reminded that Emmer is also a part of this show as he bans pictures of himself and his family while leaving one picture of Siri. It is noteworthy that the whole episode included two scenes from the books. One was Jaskier being thrown out by his lover, and the other was the scene in Sherwood, but it was changed a lot. At the beginning of episode 2, we see Siri traveling with Yen. Siri starts having visions about people's deaths. Next, we see Jaskier and Geralt, who buy information from detectives Codringer and Fenn. The theory about a powerful mage supporting rings is confirmed. Geralt also learns that Istred, a mage we know from previous seasons, is also looking for Siri. Finally, after a bet with Codringer, he learns that he might find the useful information in a certain castle. Meanwhile, Yen and Siri try to buy a portal journey from another mage, Keira. There is no explanation why Yen cannot just use her own portal, she says that it can be tracked but she would end up safe in Aretusa, so I don't see a problem. Who would track it, how and why, those questions are never asked. Anyway, before they use the portal, somebody else tries to buy a portal to a different place, and he is travelling with a captured dwarf. Siri has a vision about dwarf's death, and she frees him. Then Yen has to kill the evil man, and Keira teleports out because she is frightened. Yen tries to teach Siri a lesson about consequences. It is dangerous to interfere in the destiny of others. But her argument is so far-fetched that it cannot be taken seriously. Apparently, the death of this one man and freeing the dwarf will cause the death of the entire town because the merchant whose man Yen killed lost profit. I simply don't believe that. Then Yaskier shares some info from Kodringer and Fan about Siri with Radovid and asks the Redanians to kill Rins. Then we see Galatin, the elf from the previous episode, who finds Kahir, his old friend, and they both go to Nilfgaard. We learn about Kahir's extreme loyalty to the Emperor. Soon after, we observe Rins, who kills Kodringer and Fan and escapes through a portal. Philippa, in the shape of an owl, follows him, but here I have to give you a spoiler, she will learn nothing. Simply nothing, and we'll be just told that not shown, because if it were shown, it would be so obvious that she must have learned something, or at least she had an opportunity to interrogate Rings. But that would stand in the way of the script. Earlier in the episode, Yennefer sends a letter to Aretusa. Now we see the main mages, Desire and Vilgefoss, who debate whether to accept Yen back. And finally they agree. It is also worth mentioning that Vilgefoss gives Desire a bracelet, which will be very useful for the plot later. Then Geralt enters the castle. There he finds three talking heads and a girl that is held prisoner. Suddenly there appears a monster made of the rest of the heads' bodies, and by killing it, Geralt kills the heads too. But he saves this one girl. A girl that has ashen hair and green eyes. A girl that claims to be Siri. In the next episode, we learn that the girl recognizes Geralt. Later, we discover that the memories of Ciri were implanted into her head. She is also lunatic. Geralt brings her to his mother's friend, and, and they try to help her. Later, they discover that she was experimented on in Aretusa. A bit before, Geralt learns about his mother's death. During that time, Geralt also meets Jaskier, and he confronts him about his connections with Redanian intelligence. Now, but he knew from the beginning. That seems a bit irrational. Anyway, Jaskier tries to convince Geralt to give Ciri to the Redanians. Geralt does not agree and he decides to go to Aretusa to meet Ciri. Meanwhile, Ciri and Yennefer enter Gorsvelen, a city near Aretusa. Then we have a few scenes from the books. Yen meets Desaya, tells her about Ciri. Uh, Ciri has a scene in which she kills a wyvern and then she starts running for no reason in the books. There is a very good reason, here there is none. And then she is caught by some witches from Aretusa and presented by Yen as a new student. Later, Yen convinces Desaya to host a conclave of mages and the witches have a party at a bathhouse. And it is there where Ciri tells Yen that she does not want to study at Aretusa, but Yen wants to force her to do so anyway. Then Ciri escapes to find Geralt. 
For a short while we follow Galat in a car here, who meets with the Emperor, Emervar Emrays. The Emperor agrees to give command of the elves to Galatin, and he restores Cahir to grace. But, as we soon learn, the way to prove himself is to kill his friend Galatin. And he does so once again proving his loyalty, but perhaps losing something as well. In another part of the world, at the Redanian court, it seems that Vesemir struck a deal with Nilfgaard to keep them Siri and to be in return safe from their invasion. The Redanian queen seems to be behind that. Soon, thanks to the extra, Vizima's wife is assassinated and Nilfgaard is blamed. It is also revealed that the mage backing Rins is working for Nilfgaard. And finally we see Ciri once again who is looking for Geralt and is followed by the Wild Hand. Suddenly Geralt appears and defeats the Hand by using the sign art. It was one gesture, so easy! Guess they won't be a problem later. But yeah, now Ciri and Geralt are together once more. In episode 4, Geralt tells Ciri to go to Arethusa despite all that he saw in the castle. There is no discussion, no proof that it is the best option, it's just what he decides. And then they go to Arethusa by boat. He travelled on horses, it seems a quick way, but no. You see, in the script there is a scene monster that they have to kill, so yeah, they will travel by boat. And yeah, Ciri slays the beast, Geralt praises her, that's how it ends. Then suddenly we go on a side quest in Arethusa. You see novices are disappearing there and nobody gives a damn. Now Tris and Istred notice, finally, after a year or so, and what they also discover is that the girls have elven blood. At the same time, Istred tells Tris that he wants to use monoliths to help elves escape the continent. He also reveals that somebody found the Book of Monoliths before him. Yeah, that book from Blood Origin. We'll deal with the consequences of that book even existing and its capabilities later. Anyway, Istred deduces that the fact that somebody got the book before him and that the girls are disappearing are connected and that for some reason somebody wants to banish few half-elven adepts into another world. What the hell? How could a reasonable mind conceive such an idea? What led him to that conclusion? What is the evidence? What would be a reason? Why would anyone use a magic so powerful for such a minuscule goal? What is going on? Why is this storyline here? As is usual, we get no answer. In other parts of Arethusa, Yen and Tisaya convince all the mages to call the conclave. Then Yen invites Philippa, Dijkstra and Radovid. While she is travelling back through a portal, she is intercepted, she lands on the shore and she has to fight an illusion of Geralt. Later, Tris tells her that she shouldn't trust Isaiah. Then Radovid teleports... Wait, it can be understood differently. Then Radovid mysteriously appears in the place he isn't supposed to be or know about. At the place where Yasker is staying with Ciri. And then Radovid and Yasker sleep together. Now that's a part I remember from the books. Somewhere else, Kahi proposes Francesca to join forces in search of Ciri. Then Geralt and Yen meet again and they think that Stregobor is the evil mage. Soon, the Conclave commences. Now we get episode 5, the Conclave. The story is told through flashbacks and through repeated scenes that with each showing add a little bit of context that helps to tell the big story. The effort to resemble the events from the books deserves a short time of appreciation. The effort to unnecessarily prolong the episode, to the contrary, deserves a short time of contempt. I'll be honest, when you hear the same music for the fourth time and almost nothing is changed in the scene, you get a little bored. So, what happens there? First of all, Yin and Geralt try to find evidence for Stregobor looking for Ciri and experimenting on girls in the castle. Thanks to Triss and Istra, they know that he has the Book of Monoliths and they know where it is. Geralt makes a distraction and Yen enters Stregobor's chambers. There she finds the book and some evidence that he was involved with the whole situation with the girls. Soon Stregobor arrives, but soon after there appears everybody else. Stregobor is held prisoner, but he denies searching for Ciri or planning to use the Book of Monoliths to banish the half-elven girls. I should also mention that Tisaya takes the Book of Monoliths. What's vital for the story, but what also happens for no reason, Tisaya loses her bracelet and Yen picks it up. Let's jump a bit to the big reveal. Turns out that the bracelet and the earrings of Vilgefort's helper are made of the same material. So our heroes discover what we know from season 1, that Vilgefort is evil. 
there are also some less important but still interesting scenes that happen throughout the episode. There's Geralt saying I love you to Yennefer aloud for the first time, there's a conversation with Vilgefortz about joining sides in the past of Geralt and Vilgefortz, there are conversations with Philippa, Dijkstra and many other mages. It all ends, as I said, with Yen and Garen concluding that Vilgefortz is the one who searched for Ciri, but then they hear screams in the corridor. As Garrett follows them, we see Dijkstra putting a knife to Garrett's throat and saying that he should have picked a side. Now on to the general review. Let's start with what I can praise. Some scenes are well made, I especially like Garrett fighting in Sherwood, it's a long sequence shot in one go. The music in the whole series is really something, it will get you excited, they did that part right, probably a big role in that played the cooperation with Percival Schuttenbach who made music for The Witcher 3. The performance of Henry Cavill as Geralt is always a pleasure, and the lessons that our heroes try to teach Ciri are really valuable, they are about the consequences of her actions, acting with forethought and valuing the life of others. Now let's deal with the problems. First of all, let's look at this season as an adaptation. It wants to tell the story from the time of contempt. But the story is the same only on a very general scale. She goes to Artuza with Yen, she meets Geralt shortly, then there is a conclave. Meanwhile, Geralt learns a bit about Rins. The series introduces a bunch of the scenes from the books, but an overwhelming majority is their own creation. The original scenes are devoid of proper context and meaning, several of the new scenes are devoid of logic and consequence. As a result, we get a season that pretends to be accurate with the books, but very quickly changes course, and it's only for the worse. The world presented is so much less rich, deep and interesting than the one I know from the books. The characters are changed very much in many cases, in one sentence, it's bad fan fiction. Maybe without the fun part. Now on to the more specific problems. Let's discuss the consequences of ideas introduced. In this season only, we got a monster that can find you anywhere in the world, a book that can take you anywhere, even to other worlds and the possibility to implant the memories of people you don't know directly into the minds of other people. And all of that is used only once, and will be never used again. Maybe except the Book of Monoliths, but it is a problem of its own. Its powers resemble the powers that Ciri is supposed to have, so how will they resolve that in the next seasons? I don't know, but it is a dangerous ground. Now, the whole world is a mess. There is barely any intrigue. I'll compare it with the original once more, in the books everyone is scheming, kings, mages, spies, here everything happens behind the scenes or we learn about it by declaration. It's just lame. What's also extremely annoying is that everybody discusses the plans in the open. Too many times characters discuss the most valuable and secret information in a tavern, in a corridor, during a feast or in a crowd of people. Time and space are a mess too. Everyone, especially Yasuke, travels to their destination immediately with no effort. The whole story would fall apart if you would try to apply the distance between the places we visit, and the only explanation that could be used for that, portals, are used very rarely as not everyone has access to them. What's also noteworthy is that Stregobor's actions are very convenient for the plot as they exactly mirror the actions of Vilgefortz, but the show has no use for that bait. We already know that Vilgefortz is evil. The show really suffers from what it established before. I also think that it is a mistake that we know that Emmer is Ciri's father. Not only we know that, some of the characters do as well, and I don't know how it can be resolved in the next seasons in order to create a story that at least resembles the original. And finally, let's look at characters. Geralt, aside from being one of the brightest points in the show, makes some stupid decisions and I really don't like that. When it comes to Yennefer, she is unrecognizable. She's showing her vulnerability, she's counting on forgiveness of others, she's begging for help, thanking others, believing in the selflessness of others. That's just not her. I'm not saying that these characteristics are undesirable, they're simply not Yennefer's. Now Siri, whenever she is an annoying, she's just boring. I don't have much more to say about her. Now one other bright point, Dijkstra. Credit where credit is due, I like this version of him. He shows confidence, mercilessness and a sense of duty and those are essential parts of his character in the books. And now a moment for the characters introduced in this season, first of all Radovid, his only quest is to romance Yaskia, and Galatin, he's another character I like, he's a good example of a Skoyatel. He's brutal, quick in judgement, unfortunately he gets killed very quickly. So that's it for the review of the first 5 episodes. What do you think about them? Please let me know in the comments. 
The second part of the season is dropping very soon and I'll do my best to make a review as soon as possible. I appreciate you sticking around, I thank you for your comments and subscriptions, I thank you for listening. I hope to see you again very soon. Very well, Nova Air. A book tag. 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 A book that can take you. A book that. A book that. A book that can take you anywhere. Subscribe right now, you little hobbitses.